what takes you from someone who was weren't you in Miss Miss Universe for the UK, right? Yeah. So what takes yeah. you from what twenty takes, years ago though? Well, it still <laughs> happened. Twenty years, really? Yeah. Twenty. Hold on. Twenty five years, actually. <laughs> Crazy, huh? Well, you look great for that <laughs> for having that done that twenty five <laughs> years ago. Uh, but like what takes you from doing that to then yeah becoming this person who's like very outspoken about these these sorts of issues who like will go on gb news who will yeah just talk about all of this and then someone who becomes a fan of david ike and like, like what on earth is that journey like because because most people would would sort of stereotype um uh, someone who would be like yeah in miss universe as being perhaps a little bit airheaded, maybe? Um, I think that would be actually a very good stereotype because I do think they are. And, and glamour model, as I was a page three girl for five years, and I would say that most uh, page three girls live up to their stereotype in real life. Um, but no, what happened? I mean, I, um, I guess I was studying economics. So at the time when I won, so I understood basic economics and how the monetary system that we've been taught works. Um, and then actually I read David Icke's book, The Bigger Secret, um, around, I think I was about 20, 21, which then obviously, you know, studying, the, like I said, the economics and the monetary system, I had to look at it very differently because he put it into a different kind of perspective about the way, you know, money's kind of created like we've seen in the last three years just print it basically and it's worthless but what is worth something are your assets your home or land um and how he kind of ex he explained it 20 years ago how you borrow this fake money that doesn't exist because banks are leveraging um the money that's come in so they send you some digits it's not backed by anything it just it boom it appears in your bank account but it's not real it's not you know they're not notes they're not gold bars they're not camels they're just these digits that appear you buy your house and you now have an asset and then if the bank then wants to take it from you then they now have an asset and you'll put you know you, meanwhile you're paying all this interest on money that never really existed because it was all leveraged anyway and um you then, you know, when they repossess your house, the bank then owns an asset. So he explains it far better than me. I don't do, <laughs> I don't usually go into that realm, but it, it just raised red flags in my head and I, I look more into it um, so that I could understand it better. And I think that was the journey for me. Then obviously I, I moved to Los Angeles. I lived in LA and before it became this ultra liberal, like insane place, um, it was quite a health, you had the very health conscious aspect of it. And it was there that I saw that a lot of what David talked about regarding big pharma and, um, you know, not just drugs, but also pesticides and, you know, the things that they put in our water and food. I started understanding more about that and the dark side of that and how, you know, they kind of don't care if you get ill because if you're ill, they find some drugs to treat you that whose the side effects are probably going to make you more ill, but you're on this cycle with big pharma and you're a good customer and you're constantly feeding into, you know, their profits. So it was those kind of things years ago that I saw. But again, as I, you know, I was modeling at the time. It wasn't, it was always in my head. I just didn't really have anyone to talk to it about, talk to, um, about it because they probably all think I was mad or like oh, Lani you're, you're kind of boring like why aren't we talking about shoes and clothes and handbags like what's this weird stuff you want to talk about so I kind of had my other friends that we go down these holes and talk about that stuff um, together and um, I think that's how it started so I've always had it in me but what it, I think the catalyst was to really speak out was when lockdowns happened. And I knew the devastation that lockdowns would cause. And I could see this as being like, right, I know what they're gonna do here. They're gonna give you an option that you have to have a vaccine mm -hmm. to set you free. And, and everything else about is gonna be irrelevant. The rush of it, side effect, everything else is gonna be irrelevant. What they're doing now is they're locking you down 
so that they can hold this little bit of magic that's going to set you free. And I could tell what was going to happen. So I was really outspoken about it. And then I got a load of abuse. And I thought, you know what? If I don't say, like, I can't be cancelled. I'm so lucky. Well, I, I mean, I could be cancelled. My, my agent called me and said, Lani, look, you know, you're speaking about a dodgy subject here. You might not work again. I'm like, okay, fine. I'll go, go and ride my horses every day and not even have to worry about having to be somewhere at A, B, or C time. Mm. Um, so I could be cancelled that way. But financially, you know, I'm independent from that I've got a great fiance who supports everything that I do um I don't really have a boss well I don't have a boss I work for myself so you can't cancel me well I, Lilani I don't know like what you're saying oh you're cancelled so it's not that doesn't it doesn't happen like that does it you know when you're your own boss you can't get fired for saying something you don't you don't like so oh uh, they don't like so I just thought if I if I don't speak out it you know I'm not I'm doing myself a disservice and I had to vent it anyway it felt good to get get it out Mm. it always felt good just to really like let out how I felt and then after a while I saw so many people on my feeds and um, in the comments and stuff saying god you know I really feel this way but I can't speak out because of work and I really admired what you're doing and um they had my back and they encouraged me and they would also make friends with each other and have their own private conversations and made friends with people that felt the same, you know, from being on my page. So it, it kind of built like a little community of like-minded people. Um, <clears throat> and then obviously it moved on to like mandates and mm-hmm. and other really important issues that I think a lot of people want to speak out about, but they can't because, you know, they have to, to look after their families and you know work might fire them basically which is mental completely mental yeah well much respect for uh having fuck you money and using it because <laughs> no more people who with fuck you money re- i really wish they they actually um yeah used it to say fuck you and just spoke out and said exactly what they think there's very few people who actually take that freedom and use it because it's also scary um, for a lot of people to have to, to you know it's it's easy to hide behind that sort of oh i can't say this because this yeah and, and i appreciate like i the people that didn't for for you know you, you want to be able to feed your family like there's absolutely no judgment for me for, yeah. for people who who really felt like that but but i wish the people who had that freedom would use it more you know yeah that's the thing i think there's a lot of people that are also afraid of backlash Mm. or what people think about them and i lost that a long time ago i've never cared what people think obviously you know maybe it's from doing from modeling or page three or whatever i knew who i was then i know who i am now so you know the labels and names that you want to call me because of anything that i do that aren't me, It's over, it goes over my head because I know that's not who I am. And I've only ever cared that, you know, the people that I love dearest, um, you know, know who I am as well. So, you know, when I was called a granny killer, I know I'm not, it's the most stupid thing I've ever, I've ever heard of in my life. Do you know what I mean? I'd never impose my views on a little old lady or a little old guy on the street and say, look, I'm not in a mask, so I'm going to come and breathe over you. Like, if I can see they're frightened, you know, it's a, it's a shame, but, you know, I'll respect that person. But I also want to be able to um, express my views that I think, you know, it was completely utter bullshit and masks don't work or, or whatever, whatever it is. So I'm always respectful of other people. Um so I know that I'm not, you know, I'm not any of the names that people have tried to slate me for or use or or anything else. And and I think it, it was weird because, like, people would always say, like, would say to me I was brave for speaking out. But that has never, ever once crossed my mind because I, I think you have to. You have to be true to yourself because otherwise and – the, and the more – and I'll say this as well – the more that you were true to yourself – the more you attract great people around you. And because if you're always putting on this fake pretense, 
then the people around you are going to be people that either are uh, living that fake pretense or really are that kind of person that you have to pretend you are. So you never, you never be truly happy. Yeah. Hey everyone. Thanks for making it right the way to the end of the podcast. I love that you tuned in this long. Do me a favor, hit subscribe because 80% of you bastards are not subscribing, but you're watching my videos. See you next time.